the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners. Together, reducing fraud worldwide. My name is Mark Whitaker, and I served eight years and eight months in federal prison for fraud. My first fraud involved a, involved a situation where I received a fax from a Nigerian group, and now it's referred to as the 419 fraud. I think in 1991, I, I didn't even, it was the first I was exposed to it, so I did not know it as a scam or, a, or fraud. So I invested about $200,000 along with three other vice presidents in the company, so four of us invested in that in that fraud and my I personally was about two hundred thousand dollars into this group of four that invested into this group where you pay the this Nigerian group several hundred thousand dollars and they promise you get 30 40 50 million dollars in return there wasn't even emails during that time so this was all via fax these 419 frauds during then this would have been 1991 so we invested in that and we did lose the money we later on did figure out on our own that it was a scam, it was a fraud. And even though we could have easily paid that on our own with the stock options that we received and with the base salaries that we all received, it was we, we made a decision that we we're going to reimburse ourselves fraudulently from the company and basically embezzle from the company to make up for those losses. So my first fraud was $200,000. I know that sounds large, but in the when I look at my total of $9.5 million, it was kind of a small step of uh, towards my embezzlement. The scheme that uh, I, myself and three other vice presidents engaged in, first it was myself with those three, and later on I did some on my own, which I'll get into that uh, in, a, in a few minutes. But the, what we did, we, we set up a, a corporation, a dummy corporation that we really owned. We incorporated the company, but we owned it, and it was an overseas corporation. We submitted an invoice to the company for a technology that we would use in our biotech plant because we did buy legitimately technologies all the time. But this was a dummy technology that we really did not purchase, but I was president of the division, so no one could, could interpret that. Uh, I was a PhD in biochemistry, and one of the few in the company could even understand those kind of technologies. So we put in a dummy invoice to sell a technology to the company that we purchased, but that money was really going into our pockets, myself and three other individuals. The first embezzlement in 1991, which would have been the $200,000 embezzlement, the one I did with three other vice presidents in the company, I really viewed more as a reimbursement for losing, for just, for losing the money that we lost, which was $200,000. <clears> the bulk of the money to add it up to the nine and a half million in total, which I stole during the time that I worked for the FBI, I really viewed as my severance package. I viewed, I'm going to lose my job for being a whistleblower. I wore this wire for three years and three different recorders. And I felt like I risked my job, risked my career. I had a great career path. One week before I met the FBI in November 1992, one week before, I was also promoted to corporate vice president of the whole company and was told by management that I was likely to be the next president of the whole company. And that was one week before I met the FBI. So I had a very, very good career path. I was only age 32 when I obtained that job, and I was age 34 when I started working with the FBI in 1992. So I was on a, a good career path. I was going to lose that career path by being the whistleblower. And I looked at that as my severance. I looked at that's what I earned in about a three to five year period with stock options and salary combined. And I looked at that as about what I earned in three to five years. I, I, I felt that it would take me three to five years to get back on my feet because of being a whistleblower. I knew it wouldn't be easy to be hired. And and so on, and that's why I wrote my, I basically wrote my own severance. That's how I justified it. It was wrong, and I deserved the punishment I got, but that's how in my mind I rationalized it and justified it. This is just simply a severance package. I'm not stealing anything from anybody. In reality, I was, but I rationalized to myself to diminish, to diminish the fraudulent nature of it, in my mind anyway.